In today's episode, we're speaking to Hugh Massey. Hugh is the executive chairman and founder of DNA Behavioral International, the behavior and money insight company. As a Titan 100 CEO and widely recognized behavioral solutions architect, Hugh Massey helps growth-minded leaders create an exponential future by developing a 10 to the power of nine quantum leap growth mindset. Let's speak to Hugh Massey and find out how he changed his life by changing his mindset. Let's find out. Khan, your money mindset expert, and I'm so excited to be speaking to the one and amazing Hugh Massey. Welcome, Hugh. Hi, Gal. Nice to meet you. It's such a pleasure to be here, Hugh. Hugh, everyone's heard your intro. They know how fabulous you are, but please, in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. So I I have built a, a business uh, called DNA Behavior, and I am a behavioral solutions architect. So there are not there are not too many of me in the world. But what I do is I, I help people and I help businesses uh, build people centric strategies uh, for 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 higher performance by by embedding uh, human behavior, in particular uh, how people deal with money into 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 their business. So uh, I help people design you know products and services that that. Uh, involve human behavior, how people react, how people decide, uh, what people feel uh, into 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 their products and services and into their business, also into their people culture. So that that's that's what I do. And Absolutely. so there's a whole range of areas where 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 this is happening now. Wonderful. So you tell us how did you end up in this industry? Talk us through your life history because it's quite colorful as it is. So please do share with us how you ended up doing this. So a very different life journey, uh, Gull, to to this place. I started life as an accountant. Oh wow! Um, so, so so I know you're in England, in you know, so in Australian terms or in English terms, a chartered accountant. Okay. And I did that for ten years, living in so from starting at about age twenty uh, till I was thirty uh, in Sydney, Australia, and then also I spent some time in Singapore and Thailand, uh, working for. A large accounting firm that doesn't exist anymore called Arthur Anderson. I was I was an international tax specialist, and yeah, so that was that was the first ten years. But in, in, even in that journey, I started to realize that I was dealing with different people, and when I prepared tax advice, I had to communicate it to different types of clients, and you know, in, with, it, with different types of people in the same organization. And so I knew that there were people that would read one page. I knew that people who wanted to read 40 pages and all the research, that there were different types of risk takers because uh, everybody wants to avoid tax. But really, at the end of the day, when it gets to the crunch, not everybody can handle handle that. So I, I, I started at a very long, young age to figure some of that stuff out. And then when I left the account, accountancy world, I set up a financial services family office type business. Mm. And I started to see the same things going on uh, with family members. And I would see, you know, husband and wives were different and they had different behaviors around money. Uh, different siblings had different behaviors around money. And the people got stressed at varying points and their behavior changed. And I thought, gee, I need to understand all of that because what I really want to do is put a tailor-made suit on every person. And today I would call that hyper-personalization. And really what I'm trying to do is help businesses hyper-personalize their services so that the unique needs of every person are met. And so that set me on the journey of really looking at human behavior because I realized that if I was helping people with their, with, their, with their money, it wasn't really about their money. It was about their life. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get them, you know, to, and I also knew, I think, Gal, that if people were going to create real wealth in their life, that was going to come from the use of their talents. That's not ju just from investing, you know, from just putting it in the stock market. That might mm. happen for some people yeah. who've got a talent for that, like they're in portfolio management. But mm. for most people, that doesn't happen that way. Mm. So I, I really knew that if I was going to succeed in financial services, it needed to be more of an inside-out approach, understanding behaviour. And I had this theory that people have a hardwired behaviour that's shaped in them 
from very early in life. You know, it's there embedded, 85% of it's embedded by the time you're three years old. Mm. And I then had that chance meeting with a psychologist who is actually English, who was living in Australia. And she came to, she came to visit me uh, about another matter at the recommendation of her son. And we started talking about this. And she said, I, I've done all this work for years in England with varying companies, the government. I could help you build the system you want to have. Because I wanted to then measure people. I wanted to measure all of the clients, mm. uh, their hardwired behavior. And that's what took me on this journey. And so I realized that I was very deeply passionate about it. And that was uh, the pathway to then me coming to America. And because I had to get this scientifically validated. And, 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 and Carol, who was a psychologist, helped me connect with people in America, in Atlanta. And I came across 40 times in four years from Sydney to get all this science work done, build systems, test it, test ideas out with people. Mm. And eventually I stayed. And that's that's really the the the, the pathway there. And I left really, I, I sold off the financial services business because I was not actually that passionate about helping people with investments. It didn't turn me on in that way. What turned me on was how people make decisions. And you know, today. My life, my purpose is really about empowering people to to make more informed decisions mm. by being uh, more informed about their talents and and their and their financial behavior. I, I'm going to break some things down now. Thank you for sharing yep. that. Because I've given you quite a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. so so let's let's start from you know where you left your your um, you know you're the job and went on to become an entrepreneur yourself what prompted that and what made you think i want to be in business for myself well i was you know from the from the time i was at university uh, well even going back before that to be honest i was always interested in money in in what money was it wasn't so much necessarily about having the most but i was fascinated by it and i was fascinated by business from an early age and and i think at at you know, the time I was at university, I was always looking for ways to um, to make money, to invest it. And as soon as I started working and I was at a little bit of, I, I stayed living at home, so I saved, saved money, I started doing deals. And, you know, whether it was buying real estate, uh, playing in the stock market, whatever it was, I was doing stuff. My mother was an entrepreneur. Um as well and, and and my grandmother actually and 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 so it was sort of there and 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 although i i loved the accounting world when i was in it and i learned a lot but there came a day where i had to say am i going to go forward and be a partner in the firm i was in and probably spend the next 10 years to really maximize the benefit of that or do i i'm 30 i'm i'm single this is the time for me to go and build something. And I didn't really know what I wanted to build, but I did know that I wanted to build something that was around hyper-personalization, creating tailor-made experiences for investors uh, and, and, and people. And so I took my chance. And, and I think I got to that point where I realized I'm not as passionate about tax and providing tax advice as I probably need to be, to be going for the next 10 years. And I didn't see the people above me as excited about coming to work mm -hmm. as they should be. And I thought, well, that's not, I don't need to, to put myself in that place. And so that, that's what took me out. And, I, and, and, you know, I think that there were emerging issues there at Arthur Anderson and I pointed some of those out that uh, probably confronted me if, if, if that, if that makes sense. But, you know, I love the people that I worked with. It was, it was all fine. It's just, I grew out of it, and I and I, I think I was becoming a caged tiger, locked up in a place where I just wasn't going to be good for myself or good for them. Mm. And I knew I was a. I, I think now what I can see is really what I was: is I am a risk taker. I'm a pioneer. I need to develop things, and I was starting to do that there, even with the tax advice. I I, I got involved with stuff that um, it wasn't wrong, but it was certainly 
very creative, you know, in in how infrastructure deals were financed, how companies set up overseas, whatever. But I think the regime of being in a large corporate was going to get too much for me in the end. So I see that. I, and I, I and I want to take from there going on to really focusing on your passion. Yeah. And so when did you identify the fact that this is your passion? This is what you, you know, you want to work in. And, and then your whole experience, any money that you ever made was from the, you know, being an accountant or having a business related to it. How did you let go? How did you, you know, make the decision of selling that business and really focusing all your efforts onto something that is not 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 very well known and has its uncharted territory? And you're literally putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, by you know getting rid of the other one. Yeah, I think that 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 in some ways, you know, you 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 said it either at the start of this call or just before we when we were interacting and getting on the call. You know that that you somewhat adopt a spiritual approach and you let things yeah. go where they go. Yeah. And, and I think in, in about the last six months that I was at, at Arthur Anderson, I was starting to learn some of those things that you do have chance meetings with people. People turn up. Yeah. Yeah. Life <laughs> at, and 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 if you're looking the right way and you're clear about yourself and confident within yourself, you can take advantage of that. If you're not, you might miss the opportunity. But it, it may come back around to. But mm. but but there's no there's no accidents out there, and in a way, as humans, we're like like the whales are going to Alaska every year, or the birds are flocking to Chile, or where whatever you know example you want to use in, in in animal kingdom out there in nature, we're all part of nature too, and we're all got a magnetic force in us that's driving us somewhere. Yeah, and, and so I think that that's that's part of it, and so if you said that. I was going on a I was going on a journey from about a year out from leaving Arthur Anderson or six months out. I think that was part of it. And in a few years into me having the wealth management business, I was having breakfast with a friend of mine, and we were talking about spiritual type things. And she said, "Hugh, you know, you're doing really well with your wealth management business, but you don't really appear that happy yeah. about it." Yeah. And and I said, "You know," I said to her, "Sarah, that that's." That's true. Yeah. And she said, well, what are you really passionate about? And to be honest, girl, girl, that that no one has ever asked, had asked me that question before. What should, but what shot out of my mouth was I want to help people all over the world become financially self-empowered. That was the instantaneous response. Now I knew enough spiritually, if you want to call it in a broader spiritual sense, that I had to do something with that. Yeah. That I was called from that moment. And so I went and spent months researching stuff. I had a, and by interestingly, I had a a, 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 a university student doing some work for me who was doing economics and psychology at, at university in, 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 in Sydney, which is a very rare combination in Australia. It's little, it's a little less rare nowadays. More people are doing that. But she was doing that. And so I got her researching things. And I and I had had been already doing a day journal and I could see what I was writing down in there. And then of course I met Carol and I realized, okay, I'm going to operational. I've got to operationalize this now. So I think it was really about once I figured out that I was passionate about this and what it was helping people become self-empowered. And I knew very quickly that was not financial literacy in the normal sense of teaching people about stocks and bonds and financial instruments and how to trade better in a stock market. It was teaching them about themselves and that if people are going to create wealth, they have to understand themselves. They have to have a higher level of self-awareness. They have to understand other people. They have to understand their financial behaviors. And you've got to learn to work on the strengths and manage the struggles of all of that. And that was the genesis of all of it. I mean, that is such a, because I'm a money mindset person. I, that is such a, um a topic in you know, such an amazing topic and it's such close so close to my heart but i've never had spoken to someone who's spoken about money mindset in the context that you have and understanding it from from that point of view which is absolutely amazing how did you apply that knowledge to yourself because i think self-analysis is the hardest task and we can have all the strategies and all the methodologies and all the tools at hand to help our clients 
applying that to ourselves is another another story altogether so how did you apply all this knowledge onto yourself to work out how you operate and what's important to you and what you should be doing in your personal finances so you know very interesting question and and as part of the process when i brought carol into the business too because what when i really when i got to when i got to meet her which was about 18 months after i had that aha moment about my passion my my per passion and purpose i brought her into the business and she gave me a um a psychometric instrument to complete and at that time we we saw the outcome of that and I could see, uh, and I hadn't done one of those. Well, I had done one before, but it was in an employment situation and I ne never knew the results. But I did this one and I could see, okay, I could see that was the portrait, that, how that linked to all of my uh, financial decision-making, my attitudes on life, um, you know, how I set goals, all that type of thing was sort of sitting in front of me. And... So I took that forward as as my as my first guide stick in understanding myself, and then eventually we, you know, what the pathway was, we built our own our own system, applying, you know, a lot of those concepts. And so, you know, I believe in the principle of leader goes first. I had to go through all of this myself. I had to learn about myself. I've done, you know, lots of different instruments, uh, pretty consistent results. And the journey is then, you know, for me as the leader of all of this is keeping very fo very focused on my strengths and struggles, being aware of when energy. So I learned I learned that in conversations, if I was tired after the conversation, something gone wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, that that type of thing. So I, I I learned all those things. Some of it intuitively myself. Some of it with a bit of help. Um, because I've also been coached. You know, I had Carol, who was not directly a coach, but she played some role in that. And then for the last 20 years, I've had my own personal coach. I mean, I meet with her every two weeks. And we keep keep me in sync on energy. You know, and if something is out of, out of line energetically, that means I'm out of alignment somewhere or my thinking is, and I need to be brought on track. Mm -hmm. Now, I bring that, all of those benefits in a, that come across all of the clients that use our system because that's what, how it works and everybody on our team is focused on it we you know manage ourselves that this way <clears throat> and all our clients do and and i suppose it's just working with the clients and working in this environment then keeps me in check and you know gall it's about my identity at the end of the day mm. that if i'm going to be a leader of a behavioral sciences business operating at a higher level of self-awareness i've i've got to hold myself account to account with that at, at every at the highest level standard of everything that i can i mean i'm flawed too but that's that's what i've got to do yeah i've got a question for you so life has a habit of throwing curveballs <laughs> especially at people who are highly spiritual and uh, who are yeah. self-aware and they attract narcissists not just in, in the spouses, but also in various forms, you know, it could be family, siblings, yeah. children even. And it's it's really, it, it really does, it's a curveball. It comes at you from out of nowhere and you are flabbergasted and it shakes you to your core and it makes you reevaluate who you are, your values, and it really makes you doubt Am I on the right track? Have I done something incorrectly? It, wrongly or rightly, I don't know, but it just really puts you in that, like, what, the, what, what, how, what, what have I done? And I'm so self-aware and I'm doing all this and I'm so God conscious or universe conscious, whatever you want to say it. Yeah. I'm so spiritual and I'm thinking, sending out positive energy to the world, but this happened out of where, how, what, how do you deal? Because I know the reason why I'm asking is because you're, you're a behavioral expert. How do you first recognize that that's not you? That's the individual's behavior. How do you also let yourself off the hook because you attracted it to yourself? How do you deal with that situation? Well, I think that if I started in reverse, that answering that question is I believe you you have attracted that. Yes. And and that part of your life journey is to, is to, is to learn how to not attract that. 
Mm. And that, you know, we're put on this earth for, for a purpose and a mission and for a calling. Our job is to come onto this earth to find what that is and to pursue it. And and as you say, on the journey, there are going to be curveballs. There's going to be people that are going to try and knock you down. But the clearer you are about what that journey is and, and you know, if you want to call it the mission or the goal, then you can stay on it and 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 therefore then part of the journey is to to deal with those situations you know and for example for me um bullying is a very sensitive issue and and in the workplace psychological safety is a very sensitive issue because, and i and i think they're all, they're all related to bullying but you know when i was a young young kid i was very introverted um little bit overweight I didn't grow till really until after I left school you know I was five foot six when I left high school mm. and 18 months later I'm six foot two and I'm an athlete mm. and and go figure but I was not an athlete at school you know at certain ball sports I was quite good at, at cricket and tennis and golf and things like that but I was not big and strong like the other kids I, and, and I was a year behind I was sort of like I was in that, that sort of cusp of that I probably should have been held back a year. Um, but, you know, and, and this is an issue here that we, you know, wanting to be vulnerable. My father died when I was one. My mother was pregnant with my brother. And what I've learned out of, out of science now through and through our clients who have been a boy without a father, there are a whole range of issues that come up with that. Yeah. And I think that's part of my challenge was to deal with being the boy without a father, um, it does cause social issues, introversion, um, l learning issues, uh, but you can be, you can in a way be aggressive with it too. You know, and there was um, instances where, where you know, I've been reminded by my brother that I and my mother that I was aggressive as a kid, but you know, and, in, in attitude. But but somewhere in there, I was also bullied, and and it was partly because I didn't know how to deal with the world, and. That's been a lifelong challenge, and you know, and but but you can attract the bullying in, and and so therefore, how do I live and operate not to attract that in? Hmm. It's a very and, it's a key, and, and, it's a key point, and I think when you're saying that, I think I've attracted a lot of narcissistic relationships in my life, and it's I I I again I think I thought I dealt with it, and the most recent one has has blown me away, and it was so unexpected um so it make me it made me think what lesson do i still have to learn in order to let go of repeating this pattern and, and attracting it so so a lot of the time that you know and i think that narcissists can be bullies you know a lot a lot of the time that's what that's what comes with it and that they're often what I call pretty big in the room people. They're often a dominant character. They they've yeah. got a lot of ego. They think the world revolves around them. Yeah. Um, and and you know, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance. Even if they think that uh, they they know what's really right, they they still will justify behaving a certain way because yeah. it's all it's it's all about them. And I think once you you know, the great thing about me going into behavioral sciences path has helped me see those things. It's helped me um, grow and deal with myself. I think that if I've got anything out of my business, put the financial piece on the on on, on one side. It's it's being it's being able to grow up and and go out there and make the most of myself in the world, and, and you know I think that after a while you start you you'll always be surprised by by somebody or something, but the but the traits or the trail of it happening are there it's a matter of do you want to see it and i think that the clearer you become and i'm not just saying that for you Gul, but also for the listeners about your own identity and having confidence in that you're going to attract those kind of people a lot less and also they will affect you a lot less and i've had this situation come up with me recently with someone that has been a big part of my life in in, in business and there's a lot of narcissistic behavior that's come from him. Now I've seen it coming for a long time. And I told him 10 years ago, you know, you, you you're behaving like a bully. Um, and I know what, go, I, I've got some idea what goes on at his house as well. Um, it's not just with me, it's with others. 
but I started to let it not affect me anymore. And, and you know, and, and then once you're confident that you just go on, because he thought I needed him, right? And I probably acted like I needed him and that allows it to come in. And when you realise that you've got an identity, you're, you, you yourself are a very successful person, you're very confident, you're running this podcast, you're doing other stuff, you don't need to let anybody else take you off your track. Right. 100%, 100%. And, and, and relationships are always got to be equally yoked. You know, at the end of the day, um, you don't need to give away your power to someone who thinks who you think might might um, completely elevate you, you know, because they won't. Right. They'll probably just take advantage. 100%. You are you've got power yourself. And and that and that's related to your identity. And I think the clearer you are about your identity, then you let yourself rise. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap up. You, yep. uh, I think we're going to continue the conversation on money talkies, and I think we'll carry on from here. But for the time uh, for this episode, please tell everybody who how can we connect with you? Where can I find you on the internet? So the best place to find me, uh, firstly, is you can go to our website at dnabehavior.com and and uh, you'll see me there. But also in LinkedIn, if you look up Hugh Massey, there there really is only there is only one Hugh Massey in Atlanta, and you can see all about me there. There's lots of posts, information there, uh, plenty of videos out there on YouTube um, with 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 me being on podcasts, me hosting podcasts um, around identity actually. So, Ghoul, if you want to do one one day, I, I'm happy to do that with you and take you through the, the process. You never know what that, what that might uh, <laughs> uh, uncover to, to, to help you deal <laughs> to, you know, for, for you, but that, 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 that's where, that, that's where you can find me. Absolutely wonderful. So if you're listening to us on the podcast, the links for you will be in the show notes. And if you're watching the new to then down below in the description section we'll have the links for you to do check him out after a long long time i think well, i think i'll attract the most amazing guests anyway but i truly am fascinated with you because he's he deals with my area but in a completely different way and it, i've got so much to learn from him i'm sure you two do so go check him out and see how he can support you you we have to have you back on money talkies but for today thank you so much you are absolutely amazing thank you uh absolute pleasure go and thank you for listening to me and Hugh today on Friday Feature. I will be back with another amazing guest finding out um, how they change their life by changing their mindset. Until the next time we meet, this is Gul Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.